Welcome, Fade to Black, breaking news for this Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024. This is all of the news that you need. I'm Jimmy Church. Tonight on Fade to Black, Billy Carson joins us. He's going to be dropping those 4BK knowledge drops. I just said drops twice. He's going to be dropping by and doing 4BK knowledge drops. That is tonight. Tomorrow night, Bob Frissel is with us. Going to be talking about the ancient builder race. And then Thursday night, John Malore is here. ETs in ancient literature. Also, Christian ufologist. Yeah, there is such a thing. We're going to do all of that Thursday night. Let's get straight to it. Busy news day today. On this day in history, 1982. Argentina invades the Falklands Islands, a British colony since 1892 and and British possession since 1833. It took several weeks for the British warships to arrive. Then on April 25th, South Georgia Island was retaken. British troops landed on East Falkland on May 21st. After, After several weeks of fighting, the large Argentine garrison at Stanley surrendered on June 14th, effectively ending the conflict. Wow. Fader fact. Applesauce was the first food eaten by astronauts in space. He kind of already knew that, though, right? But there's your fader fact. Let's get to the breaking news. Tesla posted its first annual drop in sales since the first year of the pandemic as increased electric vehicle competition from Chinese and Western automakers ate into demand. CEO Elon Musk Electric Car Company reported it built 433,000 vehicles but delivered only 387,000. That's down from 484,507 cars it delivered in the final three months of 2023. And it's also down from the 422,875 vehicle sales in the first quarter of last year. Now, Shares of Tesla fell 5% yesterday on the news, 6% so far today, and have lost more than a third of their value this year. The ranks of would-be Tesla buyers in the United States are shrinking, according to a new survey by market intelligence firm Caliber, which attributed the drop in part to CEO Elon's polarizing persona. Caliber's consideration score for Tesla fell to 31% in February, less than half of its high of 70% in November of 2021 when it started tracking consumer interest in the brand. Wow. Ancient humans quarried flint to make weapons for hunting and butchering elephants up to 2 million years ago in what's now the Upper Galilee region of Israel, according to a new study published in the journal Archaeologies. The research answers longstanding questions about why there were so many ancient quarries in the region and found that they were located near water sources likely used by migrating elephant herds. The study co-author, Mayor Fenkel, an archaeologist at Tel Aviv University, proposes that Homo erectus, an early ancestor of modern humans that lived from about 1.89 million years ago to 110,000 years ago, quarried flint at the sites to make tools for hunting and butchering elephants until about 500,000 years ago during the Paleolithic period or the Old Stone Age. During the totality phase of the total solar eclipse this April 8th on Monday, when all of the sunlight is blocked, the light levels crash. Well, suddenly it's like nighttime during the day. And this eerie phenomenon has just as big of an effect on wildlife as it does humans. Now, Several zoos and wildlife sanctuaries have organized events where visitors can observe how animals react to sudden changes in light and temperature. The following six zoos are within the 115-mile wide path of totality and have organized events planned for the total solar eclipse. Those six zoos are the Cameron Park Zoo in Waco, Texas, Little Rock Zoo in Little Rock, Arkansas, 
the Indianapolis Zoo in Indianapolis, Indiana, Akron Zoo in Akron, Ohio, Toledo Zoo in Toledo, Ohio, and Zoo New York in Watertown, New York. Yeah, that would be pretty interesting to check out. It can now be revealed that Japan's proposal for a future moon rover is more than meets the eye. Check this out. As first announced last June, but is just now starting to ship, a new scale model of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, otherwise known as JAXA, Lunar Cruiser, Right, not only faithfully reproduces the details of the astronaut transport developed in conjunction with Toyota. That's right, Toyota Moon Cruiser. Get it? But also transforms into Optimus Prime, the leader of the Autobots. Yes, the new Takara Tomy toy is a crossover between the real agency's concept and Transformers, the Robots in Disguise franchise. And it's pretty cool, by the way. As of yesterday, and I talked about this last night on the show, it sounds like a fake headline, like, like an April Fool's prank. But I thought I'd share this with you today because as of yesterday, about a half a million fast food workers in California are making at least $20 per hour, $4 higher than the overall state minimum wage. The new weight rate applies to restaurant chains with more than 60 nationwide locations and is a result of a years-long fight by workers to establish better wages and working conditions, specifically in California's fast food industry. The law also creates a fast food council, a first of its kind in the United States with representatives from both the restaurant industry and workers who can increase the wage annually for the rest of the decade in pace with inflation or up to three and a half percent, whichever is higher. That's amazing. And finally, I'll leave you with this. Sometimes... When I get to this part, when I get to this part of the news, sometimes I, I know it, it just it, it doesn't it doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound true. But check this out. Germany is redesigning its Adidas soccer jersey numbering amid Nazi symbol controversies. That's right. German soccer authorities will redesign the number four, four, the number four on the country's national jerseys because of complaints that it resembles a logo used by Nazi paramilitary units. The German Football Association, otherwise known as the DBF, made the announcement yesterday after social media users began using an online customization service to create shirts bearing the number 44. And yeah, it looks like the SS logo. When I first clicked on the link for the story, um, there's a pic of the jersey, right? And I was like, holy crap, that's an SS logo on a German national team soccer jersey. I mean, that's what it looks like. Now, here's the thing. 44 is not currently used by the German men's or women's teams, but official uniform supplier Adidas allowed customers to personalize the jerseys with a number from 0 to 99 and came up with uh, a name as well that was up to 10 letters long. The images generated by Adidas online shop were then <laughs> shared all over social media. Adidas spokesperson Oliver Bergen announced, uh, just announced that they would block the number 44 as quickly as possible. As of showtime today, the option to customize the German team's jerseys have been removed from Adidas' website. Now, check this out. Less than two weeks ago, the DBF announced that Nike will take over from Adidas as the German soccer team's official shirt supplier from 2027. Adidas has produced the country's jerseys since the 1950s. Now, are the two situations connected? Probably not, but it's certainly bad timing all around. Seriously. 
There you go. There's all the fade to black breaking news that you need for this Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024. Breaking news is produced by Renee Newman. I want to remind everybody that tonight on the show, Billy Carson is here. It is an evening of 4BK Knowledge Drops. But for now, all I've got is go back Lee Tappy.